as you know more than anyone, you know, the drug crisis is something that has touched most Americans in this country. However, I think a lot of people don't quite understand the supply and demand chain, know how it all works. So if you can just start with giving us a picture of how that chain works. How does fentanyl enter the United States? I think part of why it's been hard to understand is that it's shifted over time. There was uh, several years ago when all this first started in the, the mid 2010s, fentanyl was initially coming directly from China through the mail uh, to the United States. As China has gotten a little more tough over the years under pressure from the United States, uh, we've seen that flow shift to uh, Mexico with precursor chemicals that are supplied by China uh, with Mexican cartels using those to uh, make fentanyl in clandestine labs and then smuggling it across the border. Um, we're increasingly seeing those precursor chemicals come from other countries as well, including India. So as this landscape sort of shifts, it's going to be interesting to see um, where the, the cartels that are making the fentanyl continue to get their, their supply of the chemicals they need in order to make it. And very quickly, Keegan, why is it so easy to smuggle, you know, these drugs in the border? Like, why? I mean, I, you know, I've, I've been in that border so many times. You have as well. We've been with Border Patrol agents. Like, why is it logistically so hard, so easy? Well, fentanyl, uh, part of the appeal of it is that it's so powerful. Uh, it's, it's more concentrated and more powerful than uh, morphine or heroin. Mm. And so uh, you don't need as much to get as much, you know, as much volume of powder to smuggle, essentially. So when you're... Uh, smuggling a, through a port of entry, you know, in, in compartments hidden in a, a large vehicle, like a, a, a trailer truck or something like that. Um, the amount of fentanyl that you can smuggle in one of those can supply uh, a pretty large mm. customer base. That's part of the challenge with, with fentanyl specifically. If you look at the numbers, they're, they're pretty horrific, right? There's over 73,000 Americans that have died from a fentanyl overdose just last year. So, of course, we know that, you know, most of this fentanyl is being produced in Mexico, it's being produced in China. But if you look at both of these countries, they don't have the same problem. So what does that tell you, and based on your own reporting, about the crisis that we're facing specifically in the U.S.? Well, it's a, it's a supply and a demand crisis, right? The mm. supply uh, comes from China and Mexico, but the demand is a uniquely American thing. Like, these drugs wouldn't come here if people weren't consuming them and paying dollars to acquire them. So when the, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, tightening up the border, uh, cooperating with China and Mexico internationally, and I think those are important in their own rights. But, you know, at the end of the day, as long as American consumers uh, are consuming fentanyl, it's going to find a way to get into the country. What does it take to address that demand? Right. I think I think you're absolutely right. I think at the heart of it is Americans are asking for it. Right. There's a crisis that starts with us. What will it take to address that demand? I mean, I think it's a rethinking of a lot of the ways that uh, we look at drug addiction. I think uh, there's been some you know, fledgling efforts at harm reduction in American cities that can go a lot farther uh, towards saving lives, especially with uh, increased availability of opioid reversal drugs like naloxone mm. um, that can per, you know, reverse an overdose and, and you know, literally save a life. Uh, and I think also uh, looking at some of the underlying causes that, that drive people to use drugs. I think, uh, you know, other countries around the world, especially Europe, uh, for example, uh, look at the healthcare system there. And I think that goes hand in hand with the uh, demand for drugs in, in this country. Mm. Keegan, there's a recent New York Times article that highlights the fact that more Americans are increasingly using multiple illegal substances at once, right? So I think one of the doctors said it's no longer an opioid epidemic. This is an addiction crisis. So can you talk to us and really explain why it's become so dangerous for users? I think that's been true uh, since the beginning of this opioid crisis. We've been talking about you know, opioid uh, addiction for years, starting with prescription pills and then heroin and now fentanyl. But throughout all of that, there's been it's been a poly drug crisis uh, that includes methamphetamine, which is the drug you know, we saw the cartel making at the, the top of the, this clip with, with you. You saw that firsthand. Um, that's a huge uh, problem still in the United States. Um, and also pharmaceutical drugs like benzodiazepines, uh, alcohol, all of those combine uh, to to cause overdoses. Uh, so, you know, we tend, government tends to focus on one problem and fentanyl has been the headline getter for a while now. But I think taking a, more, a step back and thinking more holistically, and this is not just, you know, fentanyl or opioid addiction, this is a, a drug addiction problem. 
and trying to address some of those root causes of why people are using those drugs, I think, mm -hmm. is, is the long-term solution. You know, Keegan, I, I wanted to talk to you because you've, you've been reporting on this for many years. Like, you've embedded with the cartels. Um, you've understood the problem. You've understood the pain. And so I want to ask you, is, is there anything that has surprised you at all from all of these years reporting on the ground? I think what surprises me is is that the the rhetoric of the you know the evil cartel that's like pumping poison mm -hmm. into the country doesn't often square with the the my experiences on the ground in Mexico and I, I imagine I don't know if that's the same for you but oftentimes these are people who are you know just trying to make a living in incredibly poor areas and I think they're they're kind of aware of the consequences in the United States of what's going on but for them it's it's purely an economic decision and when you talk to governments like you know i've had i've reached I've, I've had interactions not recently but in the past with the government of china asking about their role in this crisis and they say that this is you know we're, we're doing what we can but this is an american demand problem and i mm -hmm. think americans look outward to blame you know cartels with the chinese government but i think there needs to be some self-reflection about what's you know causing this drug problem right there's definitely a, a need to to look inward LA Times criminal justice editor Keegan Hamilton, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it.